It's time for the Gracious Guest Show, the Gracious Guest Podcast with your host, Mike Creevy, and that is me. And uh, I have not been to this microphone in, in a while, and I'm just excited to be back. It's basically all I have to say about it. And today is something um, I've been meaning to do for a while, and um, it kind of put it off for a while because I wasn't sure how to... It, well, wasn't sure if, if uh, I would be able to cover everything I wanted in it, and somewhere along the line I realized there's no way to cover everything I would want to cover in it, so then that sort of gave me confidence to uh, go ahead and just do this. So uh, that is uh, what I'm going to do today, and that uh, has to do with a, another book review, which I do from time to time. Those of you who are uh, followers of this uh, this show in the past. So this is the show where I take a look at books, movies, life experiences, travel, food, faith, culture, philosophy, Star Wars, any number of topics that have at the heart of them a common thread, and that namely is wonder. Things that cause us to kind of see beyond a little bit uh, those... Um, uh, trigger uh, in a good way, trigger moments in our lives where we kind of intuit that there's a little bit more going on than meets the eye, maybe. That um, maybe the things I'm going through, maybe the things I'm reading, maybe the things I'm watching uh, are like a veil. And behind that veil, there's something else going on. There's there's a common thread to life. There's meaning and, um, you know, uh, purpose and those sorts of things. So that's kind of what what I'm trying to do here on this podcast is just sort of, um, you know, reflect on that a little bit uh, with you and to suggest to you from, a, uh, from time to time, like today, uh, resources or, or uh, experiences that you might be able to go check out and, uh, you know, maybe you'll have a similar experience or maybe you'll see something I didn't see and, you know, it's hopefully a way to generate some conversation. And so today I want to take a look at uh, Shisako Endo's book, Silence. Um, and the movie of the same title, I did not, I must say, I didn't see the movie. And um, the uh, uh, the book, though, was, was written in the 1960s. It was first published in paperback um, in 1980. Um, I'm, that's not even what I meant to point out. I was actually going for the date of when the translation uh, was published. So the Japanese, Eng first English translation, I think, was 1969. Um, and uh, the, the novel itself uh, by Shusako Endo was, was published a couple of years before that, and I actually I don't have the date in front of me, but I'll get that real quick. So Silence, a lot of people saw the movie that came out uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, Martin Scorsese released after actually a long time. Apparently, uh, as I understand it, Scorsese read this book many, many, many years ago. Um, here it is. It was 1966 historical fiction uh, novel. So it's it's got some historical elements to it, sort of the framework to the book. Uh, the setting, and I'll, I'll get into some of that here in just a second with the, the greater review, but um, Martin Scorsese read this book years and years ago and was very inspired by it, found it very interesting, and he wanted to adapt it for the screen for a long time. Um, and I think, if, if memory serves, uh, he actually had you know, a couple uh, attempts at it in the past, or, or would, would I don't know if they ever started filming anything, but, but uh, it just never really got off the ground for one reason or another, and then finally was able to release it just a few uh, a, f a few years ago, with uh, Liam Neeson and um, Adam Driver, and then uh, Andrew Garfield in sort of the the, the title role of um, of uh, Father Rodriguez. So this basically, um, let's see here. So in the prologue of this book, just to set this sort of you know set the tone for you, and I, I'm not going to give too many spoilers. Um, just to kind of you know set set this up for you, I'll, I'll just share some basics. So it really kicks right off talking about this character, Chris, Cristoval Ferreira, Father Ferreira, who is um, reported to have uh, basically rejected his faith. And Father F Ferreira is a uh, this leading figure. He is. Uh, and he's, he's, you know, basically based on this historical, this person, you know, and he was a missionary to Japan in the time just after the, uh, the initial sort of wave of missionary activity there, Francis Xavier and, and some others who really planted the seeds of Christianity in Japan in the, in the latter part of the 16th century, mid 16th century, the latter part of the uh, 16th century. So, you know, late second half of the 1500s. 
and and Christianity takes off and thrives in Japan, um, and there are hundreds of thousands of converts, and it really you know there's this really success story at first that, that it really takes root and um, that the Japanese respond very um, uh, positively for the most part to Christianity. And then uh, out of nowhere, basically this this new power uh, or new new regime comes to power and basically only sees Christianity as you know a subversive European thing that is there to sort of supplant Japanese values, etc. Fill in the blank. So there is a huge, radically violent purging of Christianity in Japan during those next few decades into the beginning of the 1600s, early 17th century. So what we pick up with in silence as you start reading it is that Father Ferreira, who had led this group, and basically he's, he's like this hero. You know, he's, this, this, he's the guy who's going to be you know, this, you know, this, this very Christ-like figure to go in to minister to the Christians in Japan who are suffering, to, to fight, you know, to subversively baptize. And he's like this heroic champion missionary. And word comes to Rome that Father Ferreira has been captured and under duress and torture has a, rejected his faith, that he's apostatized, rejected Christ, and stamped on the picture of Christ called a fumier. It's like this little this icon, this, this sort of image of Christ that the government, it's sort of their test. Like if you come out and spit on or stamp on or otherwise sort of uh, publicly um, reject your faith through this act, then, you know, then, you know, okay, then you're in the good graces of the daimyo. Um, so Father Freira does it, supposedly. And two of his priests that he taught, um, he, he basically um, mentored, and, and, you know, these, these young men, uh, these young uh, priests who are some of his, his best students and everything, like, they just refuse to believe it. And everybody's taken aback. Um, they're completely shocked. And um, so it's, it's Father, uh, Father Rodriguez, and uh, um, oh, where's the other guy? Father Garupe. They're both Jesuits, and in these characters. And what's interesting again, the whole context of this book, it's based on real history. That uh, you know they are. So these guys are Portuguese Jesuits. They're serving in China, and um, they hear about this. And since they're close, like they basically are like, well, we're gonna go to Japan undercover and get to the bottom of this. You know, there's no way Father Ferreira rejected the faith, um, and. So that's kind of the, the, the background of the um, of the um, uh, their their mission, the whole rest of the plot of the story. Uh, and the fumier I should I should clarify, it's basically like a carving of Christ. It's it's a you know car, carved image of Jesus. So um, there's and there's all sorts of terrible you know sufferings that the Christians are going through, uh, all sorts of horrific torture. I won't describe any of it here. The book does. Um, and so basically, what you're running into is uh, this this sort of mystery in a sense too. Like, is it true what they're hearing about, about Father Ferreira? Did he actually reject his faith? Or is that just all you know made up? Is that uh, 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 mischaracterized or blown out of proportion? Like, what, what's really going on? So they, they really kind of keep that sense, or Endo keeps that sense, you know, and, and the, the, the narrative as you read through it is very compelling. Um, again, I don't want to give any, you know, plot points away, but you know, you run into a lot of very important questions in this book. You know, questions and, and, and uh, human things like, you know, heroism, fear. Uh, what do you do under fear? You know, uh, that it's one thing to be afraid, kind of, you know, okay, well, I'm afraid this might happen. It's a whole other thing to be f afraid and filled with the kind of fear of, of, like, it is happening, right? Like, I am arrested for my faith. I am being tortured right now for my faith. You can think about that ahead of time all you want, but this book does an amazing job, probably better than anything I've ever read, of really just throwing you into those scenes, and it just forces you to just reflect and, like, oh, my gosh, like, what would I do? How do I even know what I would do? Because you run into some characters in this book who you really didn't maybe think, you know, they wouldn't have been your first candidate for someone who's necessarily going to endure torture to a, the level of, like, heroic saintliness, and they do. There's others that you expect to be these great heroes who are cowards or who at the last minute, just for one reason or another, just completely reject Christ, completely go back on everything they ever said and, and abandon him. Um, there, There's a Judas character in the book who's like, you know, betrays people and then, you know, shows severe repentance for what he's done and they 
forgive him. And then he does it again, you know, like back and forth. Like this guy, this horribly broken guy who's like betrays people like over and over and over again. Um, that just drives you nuts. And it's like, oh my gosh, like, but then you also have to ask like, what would you do? Like, how do you know you wouldn't be just like him? Um, so, and, and ultimately what it leads to is, is an encounter, you know, and I'm trying to be as vague as possible, with Father Ferreira, you know, and we get to the bottom of, like, what really happened with him, uh, and there's kind of a, sort of a cliffhanger ending in a way. You know, it doesn't really tie everything up in a nice, neat little bow, and in fact, so I, I, I'll warn you ahead of time uh, a couple things, so let me just give some warnings. First off, I highly, highly, highly recommend this book. I think... It's an important book to read. I think it's an important book to reread. I think it's an important, uh, it, it raises a whole host of very important things if you're a person of faith to consider. If you're not really a person of religious faith, you know, from a historical standpoint, from um, the standpoint of just human experience and, and suffering, and like what do you do when you're faced with suffering, or what would you do if you were being sort of um, coerced to potentially reject whatever it is that you most value, you know, and your friends and your family and stuff like that. So don't make the mistake of thinking, well, I'm not Catholic. That doesn't apply to me. Y you really should read this book, especially if you're interested in history, too. Um, but even if you're not especially interested in history, it's just a really great novel. Um, I will say this. If you are Catholic, if you're Christian um, of any stripe, uh, especially if you're Catholic, um, I, I would maybe hesitate to read it <laughs> if you're like really on the fence about your faith not because i think that there's a, a loophole or a weakness or something with christianity but just because there is such intensity in this um a lot of people draw wrong conclusions from it when they're coming to it from a, like a sort of a christian perspective um and some people kind of and, and with the movie i saw this happen too again I, as i mentioned i didn't see the movie but I, I saw a lot of this coming out in the reviews of people like seeing the miserable, horrific situation that these people face and kind of having their faith be undermined to some degree by it. Um, I don't actually think there's reason for that, but I get, but I get why it happens. Um, so I will warn you about that. Like, it, it's got a lot of really sad, depressing stuff in it. Um, so it's not really for the lighthearted. Uh, but by the same token, I think it really is, though, important, especially if you're a person of faith, if you're trying to grow in your faith, you know, it raises some very important questions. What would you do if you were in that situation? Would you reject Jesus? If you think you wouldn't, how do you know you wouldn't? Do you know or, you know, um, do you trust him that, you know, uh, he would give you whatever you would need to face that suffering? I mean, that's what Christ says. You know, Jesus says in the Gospels that, um, you know, um, that, that you know, he'll be there with us. And, and Paul talks about this too in his letters, the idea of, that, you know, um, that, well, actually, a couple people talk about this in the New Testament letters about, you know, that, uh, that no suffering has faced me that, you know, isn't common to my brothers and sisters around the world, something like that, you know. But what does that really look like? Um, how do I grapple with, with uh, questions of, how do I grapple with betrayal when someone betrays me? What do I do when I'm, I'm tested? What do I do when the institutions I trust uh, actually basically force me to make a decision or try to force me to make a decision I don't want to make uh, and even threaten my life with it. Um, how do I process those kinds of things? Do I ever even think about suffering or what would happen if I were pressed? And if not, why? I mean, yeah, it's great to kind of, you know, traipse through life pretending that everything's going to be hunky-dory um, and just sort of, you know, wander aimlessly through our, our sort of brainless screen kind of um, uh, culture, but uh, sooner or later, real life's going to punch you in the face. <laughs> uh, I hate to tell you that, but it is. And uh, you can hide from it as much as you want, but it's going to happen. And then what do you do? You know, you just lash back because you didn't expect it? Or did you think ahead of time? Did you reflect? Did, did, have you learned from suffering in the past? Uh, where do you go to learn from suffering? How do you make sense of the story of your life? and your place in it. Uh, these are really important questions, and everyone in history, across all societies and, and times in, in the whole history of the human race, have seemed to understand that to some degree. We really don't, in a lot of ways, which is uh, a little concerning, if you ask me. <laughs> um, so anyways, these are the kinds of questions that kind of crop up as you read through silence, 
And so I definitely, I don't know that it's like a good beach book. Like if you just want to crack it open and have a, you know, like a fun read, this isn't your book. Um, but if you want to have a, a very good classic read that brings up some very serious and important questions, uh, you definitely want to check it out. Uh, also on the you know, kind of related, and I'll just mention this before I close out, um, there's a, a, a Japanese artist um, who's just a really, really interesting guy. Um, and, um, and he has a book uh, out about this. The, the artist's name, by the way, it's uh, Makoto Fujimura. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Makoto Fujimura, excuse me who's a um, uh, Japanese-American uh, artist and, um, you know, kind of cultural guide, I think, is a good way to describe it. And um, uh, Fujimura just wrote a book the other uh, couple years ago called Silence and Beauty, Hidden Faith Born of Suffering. I haven't read it yet, but it's got really great reviews, and he kind of pursues, you know, his, uh, from his own sort of Japanese-Christian perspective, looking at the, the heritage of all this suffering of Christians in Japan, uh, and how you process that, how you process that era where so many people rejected Christ, you know, in those moments of, of suffering and, and temptation and uh, torture. Um, and then, you know, uh, how, how, like, where does basically Christianity stand today in Japan? Um, so, again, really high reviews on that one. I'm probably going to try to read that pretty soon. And uh, I might have some follow-up uh, on that. So, anyways, so this is just a short little... Uh, exploration into some of the basic things behind uh, uh, Shisako Endo's 1966 novel Silence. The movie of the same name came out, uh, I think, in 2016. So, uh, yeah, check check them out. Definitely read the book, um, and uh, that will help you, I think, with, with the movie as well. Uh, so, anyways, this is Mike Creevy, The Gracious Guest Show. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, tell a friend about it. Spread the word. Uh, help, help, help me get the word out about this program. And uh, feel free to shoot me an email, by the way, also, anytime, at thegraciousguest at gmail.com. Again, thegraciousguest at gmail.com. Love to get your feedback for the show, uh, ideas for future shows, things you'd like to hear about, and... Uh, any way you can kind of help out, so I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for tuning in today, and until next time, don't forget to wonder. Take care. <laughs>